I'm recording now, Trey's recording now, and we're starting the podcast. This is the start of the podcast. Hello, welcome to the podcast. Video games are hard. Sid and Trey, this is Trey. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Trey. I'm Sid. We're here. This week, we have no guests. Empty seat over here. We can yep. talk about how Die Hard is a Christmas movie. And how that's also... Christmas movie. We have decided that as our team name for the 2v2 Lock Up Mingle Tournament. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to so came in clutch with that suggestion on our last podcast where we were taking the final suggestions. We got a few more good ones, let me tell you. But Ice Wind Nussle gave the one that won our hearts. Die Hard, the Christmas movie is our team name. Die Hard colon the Christmas movie. Instead of Die Hard 2, Die Harder, or Die Hard with a Vengeance, or what's the... F die Hard, Live Free or Die Hard? I don't know what the fourth one's called. Fifth you, one's called? You oh. may be sitting there thinking, well, that's an obnoxiously long name. Isn't that kind of annoying? Well, believe it or not, it's not even the longest team name in the tournament. The longest one is actually held by the people who are kind of putting this together, Ramado and Danny, with the team name European Speed Weeb Team Redemption Arc. What a great name. What a mouthful that one is, but... That's a, a great name. A good did, one. A, you, you know, Ramado critiqued the podcast today. Really? I was, I was talking about how my... Uh, Our perfect podcast? Is there any criticism you can give? Yeah. You can critique no this podcast. No way. I, I was talking about, I, I told my family that this podcast existed. No, actually, no, I didn't tell it. Somebody that, I, that knew the podcast existed told my other family. They actually listened to half the podcast. Hmm. And then their one, their one note the next day at, at our next family gathering was, it's good. It's a little long. <laughs> yeah, it's super long for a podcast, you know? And I was just like, yeah. I don't know. You don't have to listen to it. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's, I don't want... That reminds me. I love when I see those YouTube comments on... They go to any video that's over an hour in length, e.g. the world record history of Sunshine 80% quota. Um, you'll occasionally see comments being like, I can't believe I watched the whole... Well, that's actually a good thing. Sometimes, to a lesser extent on my videos, but like you'll see it on other videos... They'll be like, do you really expect me to watch this whole thing for two hours? And it's like, no, you don't, you don't have to. <laughs> you, don't, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> like, first of all, you don't have to. It's a free country. Second of all, you can, there's this thing, this new feature they added to YouTube. It's pretty crazy. Ready to hear this? Is it? Is it uh, yes. All right. So have you ever, like, looked below a video that's playing? There's, like, this little horizontal bar of stuff on it, right? Huh. All right. There's yeah. this, like, circle that's sliding along this line, crazily okay. enough, and you can like click on the line and the circle will move to the line and yeah. you'll like travel in time. It's crazy, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. I don't even know when they, when they added it, but it's pretty crazy you can even do that, you know? Okay. Before you that, you had to like... watch the whole video in its entirety and you couldn't skip through it, but god damn. Or, or, or go, see, I was, I was thinking you were about to suggest that people could, I don't know, listen to it or watch a video in multiple sittings. Oh, that's an even bigger brain. You know, that's crazy. But all, I, I, all jokes aside, I, I really do. I, I read through all the comments for uh, the podcast every week. I do too. It's nice to see people periodically being like, oh, yeah, keep pumping these out. These are great. <laughs> like that, those, Dude, those comments, those are great. That's the reason I'm still motivated to do this with you. It's like every time I see that, you know, makes my day. Honestly, yeah. it does. It's dope. We see you. I like those comments. So yeah, anyway, back to Romato. Romato critiqued the podcast. Oh, right, Romato. I, I thought I it was like your family and you forgot about Romato, but it was Romato himself. Romato and... No, they critiqued the podcast. But they don't... I don't... I don't it's fine. Oh, but then Romato did as well. Romato also did. He said, we don't talk about bingo enough. So, oh, well. You know how then, we can fix but then that. Again, but then again, the tournament's going to start in, in less than a month. And we're probably going to be talking about... At, I don't know. We're going to be talking about the, the tournament... A lot. Speaking of criticism, if you're listening, you know, of course, we appreciate the comments and making people's days and whatnot, but if you have any criticisms, any suggestions how we can improve our crafts, feel free to share below if it's constructive. But, um, yeah, so the tournament, the 2v2 lockup bingo tournament for SMS, that starts on January 20th, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm actually going to be on vacation that week until, like, I don't know, whatever the ending of that week is, the 25th, 26th. So we'll have to schedule our first match 
as late as possible pretty much, but I should be able to make it. Either way, what Sid was trying to get at was, we hear you, Ramado, we're going to talk about bingo more, but when the tournament starts, every week we will have something bingo related to talk about, so don't worry. We'll be like, at the bare minimum, we'll be like, wow, we sucked, or wow, <laughs> we played great. Like, at the bare minimum. Just like, oh yeah, we played a bingo tournament this this week. It's we a win-win, because win, if we lose, we can be like, damn, we're awful. But if we win, we're like, wow, we still got it somehow. Or we can be like, oh, and if we lose, we can be like, oh wow, this tournament was run like garbage, you know? Oh no, surely not on speed gaming? No, no. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Professionally I guess ran true. tournament. I'm telling you, Die Hard the Christmas movie will either take the world by storm or bust her out in O2 fashion. We'll see. I can say one thing. We, we might win a match. You know, there's a possibility of that happening. It's, it's interesting to know that we were, like, our team, our composition, Trey and I, we were first seed a year and a half ago. And now, after the time has sanded us down, we are now, like, what, fifth seed? Well, the seeds aren't even like released that. yet, officially. Yeah, we're going to be something like that. I'm gonna Romano told me that we were going to be something like that. I'm going to predict that we're going to be fourth seed. Okay. I'm going out on a limb. It's fair. I was, because you can see a list of all the participants so far, and based on that list that I saw, um, Oatflaker and Guy is probably going to be first seed. Ramado and Danny, probably second seed. Paper Rario and JJSRL, third seed, I'd say. And after that, I forget if there's someone who would maybe be better than us, but... Urinal Mike. Urinal Mike. Toilet Michael. Alone. He's going to solo. You mean the guy who Phoenix bopped in 10 shines? <laughs> Wait, no, yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah, this see. <laughs> that's a bad seed. I got the deets, I got the research in there, I swear. Uh, so, the, the first thing that I want to cover, just before, Trey has a fleet of things. We actually have, uh, we want to do another world record history thing. I've got a bunch of little tiny things that will either take two minutes or will spiral into a 30-minute tangent. We'll have to wait and see. So I'm going to complain about Mario Maker right now. You know how a couple of weeks ago, everybody knows that I talk about Mario Maker now. Yeah, whatever. Mario Maker I'm guy, have you my... know, Sid, Mario Maker guy, they go hand in hand, of course. I, I'm going to... I was sucking its dick a little bit a couple weeks ago. I'm no longer sucking its dick. I think the what? Ninji... I, I think the Ninji speedrun is interesting, and I think it's, it's, it's fine, all right? But the fact that everybody gets gold stars is dumb it reminds me of like back in grade eight our our high school i got i i was on the volleyball team or not our, our high school in grade eight in my elementary school i was on the basketball team and the volleyball team not that anybody really cared because it was grade eight who cares <laughs> <laughs> i care and i was on those teams and i was wh like whatever but i actually played soccer i was tall so i was on those teams but i i, I actually played soccer and i wanted to try out for the soccer team and Wait, then they I went you, you, you were a goalie right I was a goalie. Yeah. For some reason, I remember <laughs> that small detail from forever ago when you told me that. But yeah, I was a good goalie, or my coaches said that I was. I don't know. They were giving you anyway. a gold star, even though you were trash. No, go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was trash. <clears throat> so, so I only I wanted to try out for the soccer team. I made the other teams, but I didn't really care. I was tall. Whatever. Who cares? But I wanted to try out for the soccer team. The one thing that. They were just like, oh, everybody's making, or, or like, e the same people are making the team for every single sport. So you know what we're going to do for soccer? We're going to make everybody that try out, tries out a member of the team. Was that because everybody, there were not that many trying out, or what? No, it's because they wanted different people on the team, or like, they wanted everybody to be involved. I don't know, some bullshit. Hmm. So... In in turn, I responded to that like, oh, so that's the lamest shit ever, and I'm not going to participate. And apparently it was like, the bus was full every single time. Oh my God. Going to, going to matches and stuff. It was it was horrendous. We, they, it was a bad team, too. Like, everybody was on the team, so everybody had like two minutes to play. It was bad. It was bad. Mm. And so, I did not try out for that. Anyway, what, it... Did the, well, hold on. The gold, did they add insult to injury by making it like... They would cycle in people even amounts of time, regardless of yeah. skill level. Oh my god, that's the Obviously, worst. Obviously, 
Right. <laughs> of any team, that would be the team. Just like, oh, everybody, if you try out, you're on the team. If they didn't, if they're just like, oh, yeah, but these ones are the best. <laughs> and then, like, you guys can be the bench warmers, but you're still on the team. Don't worry. Yeah, but you're you're here. You can hand out the oranges. See, like, I'd be a great orange hander outer. Come on, dude. I'd do that. I'd be dope, too. I wa- that's what I wanted to try out for the team for. I was just that's like, my calling know, goalie. Life. Goalie sounds like a good role for me. I don't know. Maybe defender. Orange slice hander router. Dude, I forgot, right. like, back when I played soccer in elementary school because my parents made me. I remember oranges at halftime, like it was yesterday. <laughs> Every halftime, we go, oh, we got oranges, we got oranges. We got oranges. Oh. Uh, but yeah, so the ninja speedrun with Mario Maker is reminding me of that because if you put any effort in... So the world record, for context, the world record of the past, of uh, last week's ninja level that just ended as we're recording this. Uh, the speed venture of Link. So it's the first ninja speedrun with Link that you get to use, whatever, since the update. Uh, the world record was 24-something. Uh, it doesn't actually post the world record, so we don't know for sure. But it's 24-something. And I had a 27.4. Mm, not Everybody, bad. Every, or it was 27.420. I got that time and I was like, I'm done. I'm done with this. Uh, I, I only put like two hours or like four hours in maybe total. Uh, not a lot of work over a week. Yeah, only four hours into one level. That's nothing. Yeah. Like, especially for a speedrunner. like people sitting there going like, oh, four hours for one level. Yeah. It's not for speed. Yeah, that's like a, nothing. I was trying to come off like that, but I realized actually that isn't a whole lot for like a speedrunner. <laughs> it's not. That's uh, nothing. But so, yeah. So I got 27 seconds. I got gold stars. Which is whatever. I was top 1,500. I was like 1,400 and something. Uh, the other week, I was top 300. Everybody that got below 38 seconds 38. got gold stars. 38. Like, that was my second attempt without even learning anything. Oh, man. And everybody below that time. I tweeted out uh, about it today, and Noki Doki liked it. Specifically Noki Doki, because I, I remember Noki Doki a couple weeks ago saying, like, Wow. It's like, it's very little effort to get gold stars. It, I swear 20,000 people probably get gold stars. There might be, I, 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 that's a little bit too much. I was, gonna, I was about to say less people get silver stars, but it's kind of cooler to be the bronze star guy or the silver just, star guy because like, you don't literally don't give all. a shit. Yeah, you just like played the level and went, fine. Like, it's almost kind of cooler. You almost get more respect for that. So the world record was 24 seconds. Below 38 seconds got gold stars. And they don't reveal the, the threshold for gold stars till the thing's over? Well, I, I don't think it's like a time requirement. It's, it might be placement. I don't know. See, it, it can't be time requirement because everybody below like 19.5 or 19.7, something in the 19 range. Or oh, a tw- 20 range or something. Like within a second of world record the previous week got gold stars. Oh, wait, you're but saying there were... it's a certain number of people. Yeah. Okay, okay, that makes more sense. But literally, I, I, I was looking at the, the, there's a bar graph that shows everybody's times at the end of the ninja speedruns or during the spe- ninja speedruns. And mm. it shows the, the amount of people that has that specific second. And there were literally... 300,000 people that had 20 seconds in the first Ninja Speed Run. The, the second Ninja Speed Run, very spread out. There were people that had two minutes, like evenly distributed. Uh, like uh, the world record second only had a few people. And uh, I think the most popular time was mid 40s or something. But not even a gold star, below- really. Below 38 seconds is insane. So, I, I don't know. I'm kind of complaining about that. Like, gold stars literally mean nothing. I mean, does it really matter, though? Like, cool, they don't really mean much, but is it really a huge deal? No, but I'd like it to mean something. Like, you can still grind to get the best rank you can, regardless. Yeah, but there's... Just for bragging know, rights. It's just a... <sighs> yeah. But it's not as special. See, I'm... I'm... I'm not as good at Mario Maker as a lot of people are, or at other games. People be so good I could at just Mario. Play other games. Pardon me. People be good at Mario. People be good at Mario. So 
when I get gold stars, I just I don't know. I I'm just kind of like down on the ninja speedruns right now. Maybe I'll maybe the next ninja speedrun when it's really good. I I'll think when it's not really up on it. when it's not link themed, it might be more interesting. Yeah, I I I, I haven't even tried speedrunning with the link power up. I kind of had to learn how to play as it in order to speedrun it at all. And then I don't know, the time really didn't mean anything. So when it's back to Mario jumping and diving and dodging, you know. Yeah. I'll be I'll be up on it. So I'm actually celebrating Christmas late because I worked on Christmas Day. So to compensate my family celebrating this weekend, which is gonna be tomorrow from when this is recorded. And the Christmas present I ordered from my brother, I told this story a few weeks ago on the podcast, but it was the uh, the LED lights I ordered. And had we celebrated Christmas on the intended day, I wouldn't have had them in time. But they literally showed up on the 26th. So I have them, and they're good to go. And I'm excited. You're a baller, dude. It's You're crazy, baller. because I ordered them November 28th, and they showed up nearly a month later. It turns out they were, like, manufactured in China and went through all kinds of shipping nonsense. So it kind of makes sense, but... God damn! I thought it would never show up, <laughs> but uh, I have my my presents all ready for a late Christmas and should be exciting. I'm I'm happy that you're about to have Christmas finally after I've had Christmas three or four times. After literally everyone else in the world has had Christmas, yeah, it's finally time for Trova to have his own. I, there's so many so many family gatherings has ha- have happened. I had two in a row. I'm done. I'm happy. Dude, there's too many family gatherings saturated in this part of the year, I swear. Dude, dude and you get... Th- like, we had, like, fake Thanksgiving in October. Oh, but yeah, Canadian then, Thanksgiving. Yeah, for some reason, we also had, like, some family gathering the other week. And then we had Christmas. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. even remember... I, we didn't even really have a reason for the family gathering, like, three weeks ago. We just all showed up. It was like, oh, hey, <laughs> we're having dinner here, I guess. I'm like, okay. Cool. And then the other awesome. like three fourths of the year, there's almost nothing except for birthdays. So it's kind of weird. I guess they call there it, used to be. Th- Sorry, they, they call it the holidays season for a reason. I guess. Yeah. yeah, they used to have East. We used to have like Easter stuff, but that was when we were kids. Like when we did. That was Easter back when we were actually good Christian stuff. boys, and now we're just dumbasses. Yeah. adults. Now, now we're just men. Yeah, gross. gross. Disgusting. Yeah. <clears throat> in other news, I got a sock on my mic. Yeah, happy happy style. I figured I'd put a, I'd, I'd put some protection on my mic. You know, always wear protection. Now, yeah, but, he doesn't want his peas. He doesn't want his peas to pop, but also yeah. it might not do anything with the peas popping. Um, pop pop pop. Okay, I'll stop doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's a great way to do it. Let's yeah. do it on the podcast. Basically, yeah. You like those pops? Yeah. Did it pop? By the way, I don't. I can't tell. Okay, I think if I had no sock here, it might have been worse. I'll, I'll let you know. Basically, um, I was recording voiceovers, you know, wrecking some vows for the Pianta yeah. Six history video. I'll never say that again, sorry. No, um, say it again. Do it. <laughs> okay, wrecking some vows. Here we go. <laughs> Hype. Um, but yeah, I was recording some voiceovers for the Pianta Six WR, no, real world record history video, legit video. And I'm about halfway done with those. I should finish them in the next week or so. Um, however, I noticed when I was saying Pianta's in need a lot, you know, the P, Pianta, every time, almost every time I would say that, I would get this obnoxious pop in my recording, have to redo it over and over again. I have to, like, intentionally sort of say Pianta quieter so it wouldn't pop, and it was getting really annoying. And I was like, okay, well, either I gotta get a pop filter or some other solution, like change some audio settings or some bullshit. And Sid suggested... Or Sid told me that another uh, online friend of ours, Milk, literally just puts a sock over his mic. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a Milk thing to do, lol, lamau. But, you know, out of, out of curiosity, I was like, you know what? I don't want to go through the trouble of buying a, you know, a full-blown pop filter. What if I just try it myself? So I just went to my, my dresser, got some socks of all sorts of varieties, see which one works best. First one I tried was this no-show sock I got from Walmart that says Happy Style on it. <laughs> yeah. So literally, I put a sock in my mic. It says Happy Style upside down because of the way it's positioned. And I think it actually works. Like it, 
I don't sound any different, and uh, it doesn't pop as much, so problem solved, partially. See, I thought I thought you were going to like keep it a... I know that you've now decided that you're not going to keep it a secret, but I thought when, when you initially put it on, it's just like, yeah, it looks kind of not like a sock, so maybe I'll like keep it under wraps that it's a sock. Yeah, well, secrets out. I got a sock in my mic. All mouth, right, secrets out. And I'm proud. Put a sock on his mic. But See, I have a rock band mic. I don't. I don't need to put shit on my mic. It turns out though that the way the the mic or the sock is positioned and like the the pattern on it, it has like stripes of gray and black, and it almost looks like it could be a mic in and of itself versus you know a sock. So it's covered up. It's camouflaged pretty well. Um. So I don't feel like I'm like oh gross talking into a sock. What the hell. So you don't feel like a loser. Yeah, I feel less like a loser, all knowing deep down that I actually am one. So see, see the funny thing about Milk's mic and having a sock on it is, is that it's obviously a sock. Yeah, I think the fact that I'm like camouflaging it is a little weird. No, not weird at yeah. all. I'm <laughs> like, like it, Milk's mic is very large on in frame on his webcam, and it's like <laughs> Just... one of those obviously white socks with like the red thread at the end with the gray ending like it's it's a sock he just makes it as obvious as possible for comedic yeah this effect. is a sock i have put a sock on my mic that's the funny part you know what i've actually always heard for years that, that like legitimately works but i always thought people were joking when they said it i always assumed that socks were like too dense and it would cover up too much noise and sound muffled but it really doesn't i sound exactly the same so Problem solved. If anyone out there needs a pop filter, a makeshift pop filter, just put a sock on it. Put a condom on it. Don't use a condom. Wouldn't yeah, recommend don't put that. A condom, on it. condom doesn't work. Condom might ruin your mic a little bit. For the mic. Yeah, it doesn't work for the mic. <clears throat> but a sock is a condom for your mic that works. D do put on a condom, though. Yes. Like, in general. All the time. No. Like, wake up in the morning, <laughs> put her on, you're good to go. You're ruining this. <laughs> okay, All right. sorry. And the other thing, so we we talked about the the. There's the more. I, Trey has other things he wants to talk about that will go. Out of, I just want to remove these things from my list of podcast things to talk about, so that I just can delete them and start fresh. laundry list. You know, we're we're clearing out the laundry. This is the last episode of the decade, right? Yes. So you know, we gotta go in strong to 2020 with some real shit and get this you know miscellaneous stuff out of the way. Let's do it. So hammer it out. This is my final comment on the Game Awards that I totally forgot for our first Game Awards thing when we did the Speedrun Awards, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, two point? weeks ago. Okay. I really liked the Beaker segment of the Game Awards. Oh, I forgot about that. That is, that is my one comment. Like, I was talking about how good, I don't know, certain things were. I don't know, we talked about Godfall, how we were going to speedrun that. Beaker... I, I would genuinely love a beaker game. When they did the, the goose game play on the, the play on the goose game with beaker and just beakered using the, the VR headset, that was the greatest moment of the of the game awards, probably. Really the greatest After. moment? It was pretty like what what I don't know, what else was great about Greater the, than the reinventing game combat? Oh yeah, the reinventing combat. Well, second to reinventing there, combat was the go. beaker segment. Well, are you just, certain I, that there's no other Beaker video games in existence? Is there a Beaker video game? Look it up. Well, I, I, I'm assuming there isn't. You know? I well, assume. I don't know. I, I, all I'm me. saying is that if there was a Beaker video game, I'd play it. And if it was, like, funny, you know? Instead of this, these piss-poor attempts at funny video games we get nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't think of one. I think the last <laughs> attempt at funny video games was like Bulletstorm, and I I really hate Bulletstorm. Hmm. It's not even I don't even know if I've you never know played what Bulletstorm it. is. It's a bad game. Don't don't play Bulletstorm, even though nobody I feel like I'm the only person that talks about how bad Bulletstorm is. I hate that game. I've never heard you mention that before. Yeah, it's my it's my most hated game. It's it's by uh people can fly. So it's by the same people that did the Gears of War Judgment. So not the the first three Gears of War, but the one in between four, three and four before they actually like got the balls to make a fourth one. Mm -hmm. So they made like a had a side studio take the Gears name and make Gears of War Judgment without the main characters. 
But before that... So it's like the Halo Reach of the Gears of War series. Sure. Yeah, but it's, think about I, it. I, it's probably not as good. Probably not. <laughs> I don't know about that game. I, I don't know about that game. I played Bulletstorm. It's like a point-based shooter, and you have to kill... You have to kill enemies in unique ways with the environment, which sounds interesting. And if you, if somebody's really good at it, it would probably look interesting. But I don't know. I I hate that game. <clears throat> anyway, point made. That was my point, and that's pretty much the note. I have other notes that can be mentioned other times, but that's that note I really wanted to get out of the way while Game Awards were like, I don't know, in the same month. Mm-hmm. So in the same year of over. the Game Awards that happened. Yeah. Is next, time, next year, next week, which is next year, it'll be irrelevant. Next time we mention the Game Awards <clears throat> will be December of 2020. Yippers. When we're giving out the speedrun award to the, I don't know, the game of the year this year, which will be Last of Us 2. The La- Last of Us 2 will be the speedrun of the year. Calling it. And we're going to have a super prepared speedrun awards that time around. I'm sure we got a year to prepare it. Yep, it's going to be dope. A year in the making. And uh, congrats again to Glitchimon for the world record. I, I'm, just, I'm just going down my notes. Glitchimon <laughs> world record. Woo. Yep, ZFG bopped after his six-year reign in Ocarina of Time, 100%. We mentioned it a little bit last year. or last Really week, the end of an year. era. Yep, end of an era. <clears throat> all right, that's, that's all my stuff. You Go know, I feel like... We should almost take this moment to like reflect on the past decade of speedrunning. Honestly, modern speedrun history, I wouldn't even say has been a decade long yet, wouldn't you say? No. I feel like speedrunning sort of exploded. Like, I saw it actually said in our, in our White Goose video. He made a video about his personal, his opinion, 15 best runs of the decade that like, you know, made the biggest impact or were the best, et cetera. And he mentioned how Siglimic was like a pivotal person because everything before him could be considered like early history speedrun stuff. Everything from like Siglimic on could be seen as, you know, more modern, you know, the Twitch era and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of crazy, but I wonder what the future decade has in store, how the communities will evolve and all that good stuff. I don't know. People will start accusing people of being toxic for no reason. Yeah, people will, will ban the word free. Yeah, you can't say things are free anymore. Every year, there's at least one tweet of someone complaining about using the word free in speedrunning. Like, it's toxic to say that, oh, this time is free or that trick is free because it makes others who can't do it feel bad about themselves. Yeah, stop saying your PB's trash if it's better than anybody. Stop saying free. You say free, fuck you. Hate you. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> like, oh, my, my PB's bad. My PB's like, bad. I, I get why that argument comes up, but the reason people say stuff is free when, like, obviously for a non-speedrunner it wouldn't be, usually it's either, like, in a meme or joking sense, or they do mean it, but they mean free for them or, like, someone of their skill level. It should be free. Yeah, I don't know. Getting offended by some... Like, one, who cares? You know? Yeah. The, this guy comes in and goes, "Oh, this trick is free." Who like if if you're getting offended by that, that's crazy. Like, either you're not putting enough time into the game to for it to matter to you, or this guy is known as a pompous ass, or he's memeing. Like, obviously, so one you shouldn't care, or you could just laugh at it. You know, that's what I do. Reed Reed says shit's free all the time. You know what? You know what he thinks is free also? Getting a, a lower 115 or a 114. I mean, it's been like or a, a long-running tradition of Sunshine Runners saying X time is free when they spend months trying to get it. Like, Kafalon, every day he'd be like, 119 is free, 119 is free, 119 is free. And it took him, you know, a few months after saying that to finally get it. <laughs> 119 is not free. The new meme is 113 is free. It's not free. Well, no. Nobody has it. Really hard. It's so free that no one has it. Yeah. But you're toxic so, if you yeah. say that. So what are you doing, Sid? I'm sorry. I just wanted to talk about how toxic it is. to Jesus Everybody should Christ. not say anything's free. You know how we did the gaming PSA last week? We should do another gaming PSA that free is toxic. There's no such thing as free if you really think about it. There, yeah, it's all challenging. 
Every single thing. You see, I everything, find... No, nothing is free, right? You know, even if it costs your time, time is money. So doing anything isn't free. Yeah. That's fair. Logic made. <laughs> Point. I don't good, know. Good, good logic. <laughs> I... See, there are tricks that I find free. Like, honey skip is free. Dude, you're to offending player, everyone who thinks that isn't free. What are you doing? Yeah, honey skip to a new player would not be free. But I also find Serena 4 momentum spin not free. And, and in this probably, situation, if I were to say it is free, then I would offend Sid. Yeah, I'd be offended. I'd be sitting here offended. But don't worry, not I'm not going to say it, so you're in the clear, Sid. Don't worry. It's not that every single time I don't go for the but momentum spin jump, there's... There's somebody in my chat being like, wow, what? <laughs> like, why, why did you not go for that? That's, uh, that's how you say free. People who don't even you know? run the game make fun of Sid for that. Yeah, it's, it's a noob trick that everybody does. But I have screwed it up, and, uh, up enough times that I'm just like, you know what? It's a two-second trick, or it's a, it's a trick that saves two seconds. I'm not going to do it because, you know what? If I lose upwards of 25 seconds because of it, I will feel bad about it. Just like sa saying... I would feel as bad about missing the trick as if somebody said it was free, you know? Whoa. I'd feel that bad, so I don't go for it. That's, but also it's free. Bad. But yeah, honey skip is also free. But, but then again, periodically you miss things. I can't blame you too much. Sometimes the mental block is more powerful than the trick itself. Like I remember JJSRL sometimes wouldn't go for the Serena 2 momentum spin on good pace. Um, which is also, should be pretty easy at that level, especially, but he was just tired of losing runs to it randomly, and he was like, you know what? These three seconds aren't worth it. I just want to get this run. And, yeah. See, the funny thing is, is that I periodically do go for the trick and get it. I just, on good runs, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do this. I just, I just want to do it. You just got to be feeling yourself. Well, then again, on a bad run, exactly. you want to be feeling yourself. <laughs> no. It's just like, oh, I'm on a bad run. Who cares if I die here anyway? You know? Or I save two seconds. Easy. The and less... Freedom. We've always had this philosophy, but honestly, like... Well, I guess you have to strike this balance of caring, because the less you care about a run, the less likely you are to choke it. But on the same token, you have to care to put in the effort to do runs of that game. So you have to like care, care enough to go for the time, but don't care enough to choke every run. Maybe, maybe Romato doesn't care. Oh yeah, Romato did his uh, semi-annual, biannual, I always mix these up. Yeah. His twice a year any percent uh, ordeal, and then he, he got a lower 116 TB. Yay. Did he beat me? Um, I think so. What do you have again? 22? Oh yeah, he has like a 116... Or wait, no, I'm thinking of Danny. Danny also PB'd. He got like a 116.0 something. Both members of the European Speed Weeb Team Redemption arc <laughs> PB'd. Isn't that insane? That's insane! And then as a result, should we talk about the, the random Twitter beef of weirdness? That yeah, happened? I don't even understand the Twitter beef. We were talking about it a little beforehand. There was like a little bit of Twitter beef between Paper and Reed about mentality. So... We're not going to like talk on it too much, but I have a feeling we are going to talk about it for quite a bit. I See, I don't even really understand it. I can't really talk about it. It's just a, like, really I weird, have it. it's a weird interaction between Paper and SSB Reed. I don't know why I said his full name. He's just Reed. But Paper Reed. made like this tweet. says, Be Ramado. Play any percent once a year. Still better than 90% of active any percent runners. You know, a pretty funny tweet. Pretty funny meme. Kind of true to some extent. And then Reed responds with, that makes no sense. Paper says, explain. Reed says, <laughs> no offense to Romato at all, but 116 anything is not even a decent time. You can take a shit and get that time. <laughs> it's Reed, though. You gotta, you gotta read it with you gotta, the You the gotta Reed know who context. Reed is, and it's like, oh, that makes sense. He said that? Okay. <laughs> See, this is, this is the, the kind of guy that the, 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 the person that was complaining about people saying things were free, this is the guy that's saying it, and you should never take this guy seriously. You know, it's like, oh, you're being an asshole for saying that's free, but it's read, you know, like you can't say known to this guy. He'll turn around and, you know, <laughs> let you know your time sucks dick. Yeah, and I just thought it's kind of funny. It goes on and on for like a few more tweets, but 
the whole interaction is just like kind of funny to look at. They like talk about mental blocks and like endurance versus mentality and stuff, but it's not even. I don't even quite understand it. Just the, like, a, a weird SS or SMS beef moment in history to witness. I, I, I feel like the only pertinent quote from it is that paper said, quote, yeah, mental blocks is, exist only if your mind is weak and use it as an excuse <laughs> for throwing runs. Like, I don't know if that's a meme or not, because the entire community was had a mental block or like the top players, I guess, had a mental block for beating Nindide's time. Now it's 22 seconds lower than that. But there was like a mental block of sorts, right? No, no, no. Ouija just had a weak mind. <laughs> like it's so, I, I don't know. That's a weird, that's a weird. A lot of quote. weird takes on both sides, but it, it's these things like this really spice up the interactions of the community. Sure. Oh, I welcome it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll put this in the most positive light possible, even though it's just weird. Beating all mental blocks are free, or is free. Bad take, plus 116 isn't hard. Plus, once it, <laughs> it was just a mental block. Once I got through, it was all fine. I just, I just thought that was interesting. <clears throat> you want yeah, to do, that, uh, that happened, I guess. Yeah. You want to you <laughs> do what? Did you want to do uh, Decade in Review? Sure. Um, yeah, I mentioned that you... everyone and their mother is doing some kind of, oh, top so-and-so of the decade or best 10 moments of the decade. That's the same thing. Basically, just <laughs> looking back in the decade. And yeah. uh, to be honest, when I mentioned that idea to talk on the podcast, I don't have one prepared at all, at, like, at, to any extent. I just wanted to mention that seeing a lot of these like, review things, I've seen a few videos and like tweets and whatnot um, sort of reminding me of these moments that happened throughout the decade, all these things that happened like at, during my time being involved in the speedrunning community. And it's honestly pretty inspiring seeing all these things like, oh yeah, that happened or that guy had that run. Honestly, like I'm, I'm pretty pumped to maybe, <laughs> I don't want to promise too much, but I might start streaming more often at the turn of 2020. I don't know. But I definitely feel more motivated than I did a month ago. So I, it, it's definitely a good thing. It's all Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Don't, don't spoil it. Come Assassin's on. Creed. Don't spoil it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's See, that. I've been streaming. What? There's Assassin's Creed, but also I, I, I want to maybe see if I can play 96 Shines again and not get bored of it instantly. See, I, I don't get bored of it. I want to see if I can just actually follow through with practice on it and get a decent time. Maybe world see, record. I don't know. See, Bianco Hundo is hard. You know? Uh -huh. You just got you, you just gotta get good. I just gotta get good. Yeah, Nebulad Nebulad uh confirmed it. He confirmed that it was hard. He he DM'd me or <laughs> well, if Nebulad said says something so it initially. must be true. Yeah. It, he just confirmed he was just like, yeah. Just randomly, I think it was in my Discord. Damn. It was like Bianco Hundo is hard. I'm like, all right, that's that's it. It's, it's hard. hard because it's the over. flowers don't always open up, and it's bullshit. It is kind of bull, dude. I've I've had runs where, dude, you can lose upwards of per missing a flower bed. You can lose probably six seconds, which is ridiculous. Pretty bad. Like unless uh, you can lose more time for it, but it depends on if there's like how. How badly you screwed up the pokies at the same time? Because like, if you don't open up the flower beds in Bianco Hundo right away, and the pokies are coming towards you, or they're just differently placed from when you usually or the way you usually interact with them, you can lose way more time because then you're just like, well, I have to get the pokey coins now, and then go back to the flower bed, or like keep the pokies kind of over there for now while I get the flower. Bed. It's it's horrible management. Like the way I have it all mapped out in Bianco Hundo. If you don't get it right away and you start opening or having pokey sprouts come out of the ground, it becomes a huge hassle. Sid loves Bianca hundreds. I am currently not on the on the leaderboard or what the the practice codes leaderboard because I don't use practice codes, but I am the world record holder in that level. Yep. I'm great at it. <clears throat> I can't even deny that. Surprisingly. Um, but that yeah, I'm great at something? basically with 
looking back, the point I was trying to make was seeing all these moments in history that really motivated me or were like hype moments in the past when they happened. Like I'm talking 2013, 2014, maybe 2015 moments. I look back on like, oh yeah, that kind of brings back some memories. I'm I'm more inspired now. You know, I might not get the, uh, I might not make progress on the Piana 6 history video as quickly now, but I may try to like fit in a stream or two a week. Um, at some point, not like in a week, but like at some point starting in 2020, I want to actually start streaming again because, you know, I've been like a month and a half of not streaming at all, essentially. <laughs> like literally this podcast has been like the one thing I've been putting out uh, ever on the internet. And I got to mix it up a little bit more. But, you know, if it means delaying the Piana 6 video more than I've already been delaying it, so be it. That's life. So, so what you're saying is my Bianco Hundos have... Uh, inspired you to participate in speedrunning again. Yeah, when I saw in Arbite Goose's top 15 uh, speedruns of the decade video, when he mentioned Sided Williams Bianco 100s in the video, I was like, well, damn, that dude, that, that really brings me back. I got to start speedrunning again. That does make sense. Bianco Hundo right. is, a, is a great level. Easily top 15 of the decade material. See, I, I, when uh, Trey wanted to talk about year in review or decade in review, I like I've seen a lot of the tweets kind of yep. like I haven't really been paying attention to a lot of it, but people have been mentioning songs of the the decade and video games of the decade and stuff like that. And I really didn't have anything until I started thinking just now. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's kind of silly. I wanted to come on here and be like and give you my personal favorite or I runs I thought were the most groundbreaking or important of the decade. But if you think about it, the decade, that's like the entirety of modern day speedrunning. You can just say like the most important runs and it'd be of the decade, right? Probably. Like Unless the, it's like there's nothing, really early. There's nothing pre-2010 that would be like best of all time, right? Well, like really early Ocarina of Time is really the only thing. Yeah. Other than that, there, you got like the old uh, like Quake runs or like Metroid runs from forever ago. Yeah, Sunshine didn't start until really 2011. Or maybe you have like Super Mario Bros. with Andrew G. in the mid-2000s. But sure. other than that stuff, like, best speedruns of the decade, they really mean best speedruns ever at this point. What, what are the best speedruns? I mean, you got Narcissa's 1810, of course. Sure. Um, Wasn't that 1710? It was 1810. Okay. Uh, there's, I mean, it's just, it's like anything, any, of any run ever, what are the best ones? Nintendo's 1440. <laughs> <laughs> Trey's sub three. You know, all the sunshine stuff, of course. <laughs> no, no, sunshine's F tier. Haven't you read, read oh, the Twitter Yeah, posts? I have seen that. It's, it's irrelevant, dude. Sunshine's an F tier speed game. Know that. I don't know. Tra I just I just lurk on Twitter sometimes and just read <laughs> and just that. This is what I do like every day. Whenever I'm just doing nothing and looking at my phone and looking at Twitter, I'll f find uh, in addition to the in the past referenced photos of people uh, calling other people clowns. I will just like randomly link Trey just really no context speedrun stuff. And the other day I I linked him one from. I don't remember who it was, but he was just like ranking the speed games in kind of a meme way. It's just like every, it, S tier, every game I run. And then C tier, <laughs> every every other game except Sunshine. And then F tier was Sunshine. <laughs> but I'm just like, and he doesn't even play Sunshine. I'm just sitting there going like, that's so weird. <laughs> Why would you just volunteer this? It is kind of a meme to just like irrationally or maybe rationally just hate on sunshine alone and nothing else that's been a thing for it is. years now it's, it's very common <laughs> it's pretty funny to just like see that randomly it's like oh yeah he's a sunshine like oh yeah you, oh this is the half-life runner oh he hates sunshine runs okay <laughs> it, ke it keeps you grounded because you know you look around and you feel like everyone loves sunshine but you gotta remember these people exist they're like they are out to destroy every copy of sunshine ever like link fan yeah. remember yeah when he snapped it'll break all your disc bro 
Only 90s kids remember Link Fan SMS runs, but he was there, man. What was I talking about before <laughs> the Twitter? Um, we were talking about just what are your favorite speedruns of the decade? Oh, what are meaning my favorite, speed favorite speed runs because it's pretty much all history so far. Uh, I I like really old Wind Waker stuff, like really old, Same. like Cosmo speed or Wind Waker stuff is good. Uh, like the the initial speedrun that got me into speedrunning was. The tofu from SGDQ. That, that's a like, even though that's oh. not a great speed run, it's still a a Dude. like a speed run that got a lot of people into gaming. I think you're speed running. If you're talking like most impactful, I think that you could definitely put Tofu's SMS SGDQ run on there. Yeah, because that one inspired so many people that run SMS. It's ridiculous. I don't know. I I haven't really. What's funny is that I don't really watch a lot of speed runs anymore. Like, oh, he got the world record. I don't. I like I. SB got the record for 79 shines the other day. I'm not, I'm never going to watch that run. Right. <laughs> well, that's so, partially a product of you already run the game. So there'd be no reason to, but I guess that's true. Even for games you don't run or games that I don't run, I don't just like sit and watch speedruns as much as I used to at all. So I feel like my preference of like the best runs of the decade is heavily biased towards the 2012 to 2015 range because I would actually like, watch full speed runs back then a lot more mm -hmm. so that's how it'd be i guess i don't know i think metroid's interesting metroid primes i, I like watching those speed runs I, I, like i feel like this conversation just kind of devolves into me being like yeah i'm kind of a fan of watching those yeah, what, are, what are some streaming... cool games to speed run and what had some really epic runs in it um whenever whenever anybody's streaming metroid prime runs i'm down i'm totally down to watch those are always fun Every to watch. Time. Yeah. When they use their scan visor to jump super far sideways across gaps. I love that shit. But like of the decade, like there's just periodically important runs. Like every ZFG AGDQ run is not maybe necessarily important, but it does see what I was talking about last week with Ocarina of Time and we were we were talking about like the depth of mechanic in Super Mario Sunshine and the depth the depth of tricks in Ocarina of Time where the game, even though it's not a new speed game, it just keeps developing. Like each GDQ run by ZFG is a totally different route of a hundred percent run. Like mm -hmm. each era of hundred percent is there's a snapshot of it somewhere that you can watch. There's been so many route changes. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So that's kind of cool to see. Like if you went like not necessarily each, like, it'd be cool to watch each uh, specific world record, but the development of the run over the years, like, if somebody could pu put together a compilation or just watch all of them together, that would be kind of interesting, uh, like, over the decade. Because the, definitely the 100% run of Ocarina of Time from the beginning of the decade to now would be insane. Yeah, beginning so of the see. decade, it wasn't even sub six hours yet. And now it's, what, 350... Two. Oh is God. it three fifty or three forty? I don't know. I th I think it's three fifty two. I don't remember, but it's definitely sub four. So yeah, yeah sub four. I know that mm -hmm. much. And um, what will be interesting, I believe, is if speedrunning maintains its relevancy or grows over the next decade. That decade interview will be actually interesting to see i think because <laughs> it'll yep. be like actual stuff from like a like a one decade alone excluding you know the beginning of modern speedrun history right yep but then again what, what, what if what if we're saying this you know we're super ignorant of the future as anyone is unless you're a time traveler what if some new revolutionary like siglimic of the future era comes along and a whole new era is born of speedrunning. And we look back at like now as almost irrelevant. I doubt that would happen, but <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, weird. it's a weird thought be. experiment to do. I don't even know how that would work. Because if you think about it, you know, speedrunning was around well before Twitch. Speedrunning started in the late 90s, but no one ever really remembers anything about speedrunning from like the first dozen years it existed. So that's basically all I'm saying. <laughs> 
Well, people wrote stuff down. Like, yeah. yeah, it's archived, and you know, there's old <laughs> there's old SDA threads and stuff. But who really looks back on that ever? And like, like, oh yeah, I love that run from 2006. <laughs> <laughs> it's like maybe there's like the random Ocarina of Time run or Mario Bros. run that fits that description. But honestly, like, you don't think of speed runs unless they happen like post 2012. So, but yeah, like a, a, as speed runs in review kind of a thing. I, I feel like the impactful ones are just the ones that got you into the game. Like, sure, sure there are yeah. cool records at the time, but records get broken and stuff like that. But, like, the, the, the runs that get you into the game or anything like that are kind of the ones that are most important. Like, the Toful, the Toful run for Sunshine will probably always be... I, I don't even... Like, even talking about it right now, I don't think it's that great, but... You know what? It oh no, kind of it's definitely like the commentary that made that run for sure. Like it kind of changed my life, <laughs> like whether that's good or bad. Doing that run in some way affected the the fact that I'm sitting here today. You know, pretty much. Otherwise, and I, I've always be, been, a, I've be always known you know, existed for a long time. Like I saw in 2005 when I was like 10 years old. I saw the original 16 star test. It was like a viral video on Google video, you know, back when that existed. Nice. Nice. And I, my, my brother showed me that and it blew my mind. Cause you know, of course, back then when I was 10, I thought it was like actually a human doing it, even though it was a task. Funnily enough, that task is like slow compared to humans now. Cause it was so long ago, but that's besides the point. Basically I've known about speed running and I always thought speed, run, speed runs were super cool. Um, before I actually got into the community, but I always viewed them as this like unreachable achievement that like these god gamers did. Because every speedrun on YouTube back in the day before Twitch was just the raw gameplay footage. There was never like you would never see like the stream layout situation, obviously. So there was this lack of personality to speedrunning where I just saw these speedruns and thought, okay, like some freaking savants picked this game up and did this just masterful run that no one could ever do but knowing what i do now it's like okay anyone could have done that given the dedication and passion for it so it could have just been a dude <laughs> it's just some random just been... dude especially back yeah. then when standards were so much lower it could have been just some random dude and i was like this guy's a god this guy's a god but then of course you know that's what gdq is so good at doing because it's it's so personal and you like, you got like the couch commentary and they're explaining everything and it's really fun to watch. G That's why GDQ was so good at getting people into speed running. Cause like they don't just see the, the cold raw gameplay footage of some, <laughs> some God gamer. It's like, okay, there's people behind this and they're really passionate about it and they're explaining stuff and this is dope. And I want to get into cold. this. So the, the cold raw gameplay. It is just kind of cold. It's like, <laughs> damn, this, this one God is, just destroying this game while everyone else is just a mere mortal but not the case at all <laughs> for the record for anybody that's gotten this far into the podcast without knowing what speedrunning is speedrunning <laughs> is finishing the game as fast as possible <laughs> this is, i know why you're doing this <laughs> <laughs> my uh yeah one of the comments that my my do you know why i'm doing this yeah because your relatives were like you never really explained what speedrunning is though yeah, but uh, yeah, her fiance uh, then turned like my sister said, "Yeah, you don't really explain what speedrunning is at all." And then my fiance turned to her and went, "Well, it's kind of like mainstream now. Like everybody knows what speedrunning is." Oh, snap. so I'm just like, <laughs> so I was just like, you know what? I was thinking about that while you were doing all that. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to explain what speedrunning is. If you right are now. this far into episode 13 of Video Games Are Hard and don't know what speedrunning is, maybe Sid can explain yeah. it for you. Yeah, depending on the requirements of the category, you want to finish the cat the, the requirements of the category as fast as possible. If it's any percent, just finish the game as fast as possible. That is what's Vid video games, specifically video games. Video games. You can't do this with the clue board game. I always thought that speedrunning was just trying to run with speed outside with your feet. Also, kind of true, but not not specifically speedrunning. So it's video games, huh? Mm hmm interesting anyway that's my uh little blurb <laughs> just like you don't really explain what speedrunning is i'm like i don't know i don't want to start every we should record a preamble that explains speedrunning 
You know, setting speedrun so much reminded me of something you told me a few days ago. You know how we always say, like, speedrun is one word, you gotta spell it one word. It's not speed then run, it's just speedrun, one word. Yeah. You were mentioning, or we were having a, like, existential crisis, <laughs> I guess you could say, over you whether were. video game is one word or two words. And I was like, it just well, what, what? Go for it. It just feels like it should be one word. Okay, well, basically... When you asked me that, I was thinking, well, obviously it's two words. And then like my brain was like, wait a minute. What if it is one word and this whole the whole branding of video games are hard is ruined and it's two words for no reason. But no, it is two words. But See, Sid brought up the idea that like what if over time when video games becomes just like more normalized than it already is in society, video game just becomes one word, much like speedrun. I I feel like that'll be the case. Because for can see years it too, to I've be been like, I, I've been looking up, is speedrun two words? And I know for a fact that it's two words. I've looked it up so many times to you figure see, out if speed it's two run, words or it's... It, like outside articles and stuff about speedrunning, they always put it as two words. But anyone in the community will make fun of you for not making it one word. Yeah. So I, I just feel like video games is just, the fact that it's two words is... It feels Mind prehistoric, boggling. you know, it's the fact that nobody's been like, you know what, we're just going to slam these two words together. If you're in, if it's in reference to a Nintendo or like anything like that, you know, like it's not a video game. It's not a, a game that you play with video. It's just, it's a, it, it does full sound motion pretty video archaic when you put it that way. It's like, it's a video game. Yeah. <laughs> Like full motion video hasn't been used in in uh, video games in forever, and that's what people think when you say video. Like the word video alone, that's what you think. You think of a mm -hmm. video like recorded at a wedding of that got recorded over of a football game by a football game or something like that. That's a video, and that's a thing you watch. But video games aren't that. Like you play a video game. And I'm not saying yeah. the term should change or anything like that, but the fact that it's two words is kind of insane. I don't know. I just feel like two words makes perfect sense, but... It does. Yeah, it does, but, like, I don't know if it would change or not, given time. I don't know. Maybe it would. It was just, it was just a thought that I had, that I've had for years, that I'm just like, why is this not whatever? <laughs> why is this not one word? <laughs> okay. Whatever. Cool. Go about my day. Who knows? Uh, but um, year interview. speaking yeah, of ninety six shines, sure. I think we I think we've covered you know decade in review stuff enough. the The whole point of that is just uh, decade in review is pretty much just what's your favorite speed run? <laughs> or when it comes down to it, see, I, I really liked uh, DMC Devil May Cry. That was going to be the th the one game that I mentioned. Not that it's a speedrun or anything like that. I know this is a speedrun like podcast. Favorite video or... games of the decade? Yeah, I really like DMC Devil okay. May Cry. People don't appreciate DMC Devil May Cry as much as they should. I've just it's never played great... it, so it's it's a great game. People felt like they were the fans of DMC felt like they were kind of snubbed, or I, I don't even really know what the term is, but. I guess cast aside because they rebooted the series with it mm -hmm. and they didn't like the, the way they were or portrayed Dante or whatever in that game. I don't really know as not a fan of DMC before that and not a fan afterwards, considering they went back to the original series because of the fan backlash or the lack of success or something. I don't really know. Wait, so you're saying the, the game is. that you love is considered the black sheep of the series? <laughs> I, I guess at this point, I guess you just love it was supposed to series be the black sheeps. <laughs> I just, I just like Mario love sunshine. But, um, if we're going to talk about black sheeps of the series that we enjoy a lot, I just wanted to mention SSX on tour really briefly. <laughs> oh, okay. Everyone who is a fan of SSX games, which is basically like a series of arcade snowboard games that were pretty popular back in the day or EA kind of killed it off. SSX on tour is always ragged on as like the black sheep of the series and it's kind of not so not super polished but like personally I loved on tour it wasn't as good as tricky but I love on tour so much that's all I wanted to say <laughs> it's underrated you for tried sure. to speedrun it it's an underrated gem I tried to speedrun it it's way too long so fuck that 
Yeah, it's way too long. Dude, sometimes the game's just way too fucking long. Yeah. I put my like foot you, down. I did some ILs, but I put my foot down. Everybody goes, you should play the game that you love the most as your first speedrun, whatever, doesn't matter. If you love the game, try it or look for a community of a game that you respect, whatever. If it's just too long, it's just too long. That's just facts. It's got to be a combination of actually being a good speed game and a game you enjoy. And, yeah. Like Mario Sunshine. Like Mario Sunshine. See, like, uh, that kind of thing, going back to Super Mario Sunshine in reference to, like, being your favorite video. When I was a kid, Super Mario Sunshine didn't even, like, crack my top ten video games. Really? Like, it was fine. I played it when I was ten. It was whatever. I played it a shitload as a kid. It was definitely my top ten. The only reason that I speed on it is because... I saw the Tofu run and went, oh, I own that. That was it. Like, oh, that looks tight. I might try it out. And then, yeah. Sure. Whatever, let's go. And now it's like top two games of all. T- See, it's weird putting Sunshine like on a, on a top 10 list as number one. It just feels weird. Mm-hmm. Like, I just know too much about that game and I know how shitty it is at moments. But <laughs> I know, I, like, I know the highs, but I know the lows. We know the lows better than any Sunshine hater would ever know. Yeah. But we know that the highs outweigh the lows, so. Yeah. So it's it, like when, when there's on, I, I've listened to podcasts that have notorious Sunshine and Majora's Mask haters and stuff like that, that over, like over and over and you over see, again. Sunshine and Majora's Mask games. are just really divisive games. Like you either love them or you hate them. Yeah. And I, I know those haters that, hate those games and i'm like i get it but you're not informed enough like like let me tell you how shitty this game is (laughs) like you don't know how to hate it (laughs) yeah you don't have enough like sure you're a journalist and you went to school and you played a lot of video games so that you have some sort of journalism let's be honest journalism is kind of a meme nowadays and especially in video games sure but they've played enough video games and they've been reviewing video games for enough years but like when you say that you dislike sunshine like, sure, you can dislike Sunshine. Anybody can dislike Sunshine. I, 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 it's fine if you dislike sun, Sunshine. I don't care. But you just do, let, me, let me walk you through how bad this game is. <laughs> and I won't even touch the good parts. Like, I'm like, yeah, sure, but this is also really good. I won't do that. I'll be like, yeah, this is the worst part of it. Here you go. Now you have more fuel. All I know is that when people are talking about how good Sunshine is, they talk about the, the water a lot. The water looks so good, though. Like, whoa, that water looks amazing. It's just like, yeah, okay. Water looks good. You didn't talk about anything else? No. <laughs> like, they don't. People like always you, talk about, see... oh, I always enjoyed when I didn't have to use Flood. But then Flood, oh, yeah. flood kind of ruined those levels it. Too. I love the secret stages. Dude, the secret stages were amazing, and the water looks sick. And that's it. That's all we <laughs> said. And those are the biggest fans of Sunshine. Yeah. Pretty funny. <clears throat> There's plenty of good journalists out there, but come on, video game journalists, not always, not always the greatest. Dude, Mario Galaxy 2, top 10 games of all time. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about Sunshine, um, but we wanted to actually do another, our second installment of the WR History series? Sure. Of segments on our podcast? Sounds good. We have another one for you. It can be about anything, literally any level or game ever. But this is also going to be Sunshine related. And it's going to be about Noki Bay Episode 6, Red Coin Secrets. <laughs> it's not, not niche at all. <laughs> no. Not at all. No. Uh, so this is another one. So we did Bianco 8 last time. Mm-hmm. Noki Six Reds is also like not not really Trey. Like Trey and I were had a heavy, invo- were heavily involved in Bianco Eight. I was not but involved no- with this level's history whatsoever. Yeah, Noki Six Reds is mostly me, I think. But do you uh, know what records came before you at all? I know that Zelpiku Kirby had it for multiple years at one oh nine. So so for context, going into this. With the Bianco 8 world record history, we were going down. Like, we were, we were trying to just, like, it was 57 seconds, and it went down to 54 seconds. With mm-hmm. this world record history, it's time remaining on a timer. So the time starts at 1.30 and counts down from there. So as we go through the records on this, that I know fairly, because I had 
a lot of them, uh, down to the millisecond, the time will be going up as we get better. So it'll be like, yeah. So it's counting down from 130 as So said. the earliest one I can remember is I think Zopiku had a 107 back in 2014 or so. Sure. It was either 107 or maybe 108 at that point. Or no, uh, I think... I, I know that before I played, he had a 109. Uh, so I remember before that even, I think... I want to say he had a high 107. And then Paper Rario at some point... <laughs> we're going to keep saying at some point, we don't know the year. I think Paper Rario actually bopped Zapiku with a 108. Mm -hmm. And then Zapiku took it back pretty quickly with a higher 108, maybe 109. And did that use the janky... Like, why turn wall kick I'm thinking of? I don't know if the high 109, 108 uh, did. But basically, there was this strat where, like, after the coin on top of the ramp, because there's, like, that steep ramp with the arrows on it, and there's a coin above that. Everybody that plays Noki 6 or watched the speedrun of Noki 6, you know the ramp with the where you hit the rope, and then there's the ramp with the arrows. So you go on top of that ramp... And you get the coin up above there. And back in the, the earlier days, you know, 2014, 2015, in the Noki 6 Reds IL world record, the Piku would do this weird, like, rollout into a Y camera, grab a red coin, yeah. and, like, aim so, for a really thin wall and wall kick off that back in the other direction. And it, so, it looked super weird, and it was, like, super intimidating. It was like, okay, I don't want to grind that. Screw that. <laughs> It, the insane part of that trick, so through the the third red coin, it was through the third red coin, uh, doing like a side flip dive rollout into the wall that Trey was talking about, wall kick into the fourth red coin, taking advantage of like, how, how do you phrase it? The it wasn't a proper wall kick off the wall. You were taking advantage of the the Y input so that you yeah, basically so, came back off the same angle. Yeah, you, you were still in Y mode. And basically, the, I mean, this kind of goes into why glitchy wall kicks work. But if you stay in Y mode um, going into a wall and then wall kick from that direction, it'll go in the direction that you face your Y camera in. So you can like go away from the wall any way that you want. So you go back towards the ramp again. <clears throat> so yeah. So... It was super intimidating. It was it was a low 109. It was a 109.10, I think, or 109.09, like literally that low. And everyone assumed and, that because it looked really flashy, that must be the fastest way to do it. So you gotta do that. And, and I was the only one that went. This isn't this isn't good. <laughs> like I, I I remember watching it when I was a scrub and being like, oh, this is really intimidating. And then when I started getting get better better at the game and started actually playing 96 shines, uh, I went. Well, I don't go for this strat. Uh, maybe I'll go for the strat. Like, this is when I started looking at ILs to see, to get ideas. I, at, see, it was a way different Sid at that point. Uh, Sid nowadays doesn't even watch the TAS. Uh, but... Sid never watches videos. He just goes by instinct. Yeah, or I get Trey to explain the strat to me. <laughs> like, I could watch this video on Sandbird and learn it, but I could just have Trey explain it with words as well. Yeah, yeah That'd be Trey so much more fun. To me, it, Trey explained to me there's a, there's a strat for Hoverless and Bingo where you do... Uh, Sandbird with Turbo, and it saves what twenty six seconds over using Hover or whatever. And instead of uh, watching a video with Trey, really wanted me to do, I was just like, "No, explain it to me." <laughs> and he did, and I got it uh, eventually. But yeah, after being like, "Why am I falling off the tail? Wh which seam are you on? I don't understand this." <laughs> like it's the third seam was, away. I'm on that seam. What the heck? Like, oh, you mean the next one that, over? And okay. then I was on the wrong seam. <laughs> it's like, well, if you watched the video, you would know that. But I had to explain it to you. So. <laughs> Yeah, but it was, was more really fun, right? Per yeah, I, I had a lot of fun, and we have something to reference in my stupidity. Uh, but, so, yeah. So I, I, I remember that strat, and looking at it after being good at the game, or being better at the game, and being like, this is, this is slow. This is really slow. So I actually just changed it into, into a strat that Trey did. In, yeah, you know uh, what? Cause <clears throat> I forgot about this, actually. So I have no... Personal contributions to the record. I never had the record in Noki 6 Reds. But I started using a strat that turned out to be better than Zalpiku's thing, just in runs that I would do. And it was basically when you're on top of that flat section above the red ramp arrow thing. The third, the, through the third and fourth coins. Yeah, I forget which 
coin it is, but I guess, yeah, the, the fourth coin? Or is the fourth coin the one on top of the thing? The, the third is the one on top. Okay, so after you get the third coin, what I started doing in runs before anyone else, I think, is you do a full jump off the top directly horizontally, and then like a full 180 degree wide turn into the coin, and that way you're already facing the ramp again and go in that direction. Previously, people would just do like a, they would wide turn but only like 90 degrees, then they'd have to like hover the rest of the way, turn themselves around slowly and go back to the ramp. But I was the first person to include the 180 turn in runs, <laughs> and it turns out to be actually optimal for the IO. Yeah. So there you go. It's still used. Even in the world record today, that's strat's still So used. it's easy enough for RTA, but it's much better than the janky Y turn thing, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, dude, like thinking back to that strat, like and how bad it was, it's crazy. Because I, 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 Zelpico Kirby used to post, I don't know if he still does, but he used to post his attempt count oh, uh, yeah. for his world records. And for specifically Noki Hundo or Noki Reds, it, they were staggering amounts. They were like in the thousands. I think the highest one he had was Rico 4 with Turbo Nozzle. It was over 3,000 attempts. It's, it's nuts. You get like a 104. <laughs> it was really impressive, but goddamn. And actually, that, and, it, and, it's even more painful back then because this, this is pre-practice codes. Yeah. So these were like so legit you, on disc, like no way to speed up your death, like 3,000 attempts. <laughs> so you had like your 100 life file and then you got game over and then you had to re-enter the level. So oh yeah, that's time... how they kept track because he had 99 lives. So it's like he knew yeah. hey, when I game over, that's 100 right there. Well, no, not even then because what if you grab a one-up by accident? In Rico 4, I guess so. There's two one-ups. I mean, uh... <laughs> I guess so. Because he but, just kept uh, track manually. I don't know. Yeah, and 100 lives was a lot of time. Like, I, I can't remember it specifically, but it was a lot of time, like 40 minutes maybe. But I, if you I grind enough, remember. then, I mean, you go through them eventually. So. so It's a lot of time. But, so yeah, he just, just did this insane strat that nobody wanted to touch. Like, everybody just went, oh, okay, this, you use this strat, you have to use this strat. Okay, I'm done. And that sat for two years and nobody wanted to do it. And eventually I just looked at the IL after I was doing like Pianta five reds and other reds. And, and this is actually after uh, Zopiku and I had a rivalry in gelato, gelato reds, gelato one, oh, reds, yeah, gelato one reds. Where, where we were trading it back and forth for a summer essentially. And then eventually calf killed it half a year later. But the, the whole thing about the gelato one reds and I'll get back to Noki six reds in a second is we were trading it back and forth for a while and he, and he quit for like six months and I was like, Oh, okay. And then after that six months, he beat it by a frame. And I was like, sure. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole thing. That's and his, then that's later, plan. you wait long enough till they stop caring and then just beat it back. Like, okay, there you go. And then calf, uh, calf of, I don't know, a couple, a year later or something like that, showed up and beat it by half a second. <laughs> and it's just like, holy shit. God damn. Dude. Yeah, back in the days, Apiku was like the king of Red Coin Secret ILs. But it was partially because no one else really did them. Like, no offense yeah. to him. They were really good ILs, but like, by today's standards, they're definitely improvable. And many have been improved, so... So yeah, Zelpiku scared off a lot of people by using a strat that sucked, that scared a lot of people off. I started looking into the game. I used Trey's strat. Uh, I started improving the... Wait a minute, hold on. Are you saying that I actually found something? You found something. I found something, yay! You, you didn't know it, but you found something. I unintentionally found an optimal thing to do in a level. What the hell? Exactly. It was crazy. I'm still, and my mind is so still So I started blown. doing that. I started doing that. I improved the record by frames. Like one, 109.16 something like that. Zelpiku Kirby came back immediately, got it back. Uh, he didn't use his strat anymore. He started using <laughs> For the strat For good reasons, because it was stupid. It was a horrible strat. Uh, we traded it back and forth. I, I remember one time, he because he, he still was putting his attempt counter, and I felt kind of bad sometimes where he would post his attempt counter at upwards of 900 or Jesus 600. And I remember getting the world back world record back in one attempt. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. Oh my god. <laughs> attempt counter one. Attempt yeah, I didn't post attempt <laughs> counter for that one. And 
but yeah, we traded it back and forth by like frame frame at a time. I remember at one point I had one hundred nine sixty nine. Like we were we were improving it by a bunch, getting the 69. water slide at the end. And uh, I don't I don't remember who the first one. I I go I was at one hundred nine nine eight one hundred nine nine two. I was at one hundred nine nine two for a while, and he got the first one ten. He got one ten twelve. Oh, I thought I you got the first one ten. I forgot about that. I think he got the first one ten. I'm fairly certain. I mean, did. it's a pretty big milestone. I'm assuming you'd remember that. I, I dude, it was what <laughs> two two years ago at this point. This is like your third favorite level. Ago. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a while, and so yeah, so he he got the the record at one ten twelve. So wait, we, were there any like new developments? Movement wise, between your first 109 and like this point in history, I think it was just optimizing just small movements. Doing a there was a triple. I actually no, I I optimized most of the movement. I there was like a triple jump, uh, Y turn through the all the strats that I currently use. I was grinding in that time. I was doing the Y turn through the the third and fourth coin. I was making it of like a very short hover after the spin jump at the start. Uh, Zalpika Kirby was involving a hover slide rollout at the start that is obnoxiously hard even now. And that saves minuscule amount of time, but still an amount of time that's Oh, actually, that was the main deterrent for me for grinding that thing. I didn't think that the Y-turn janky thing was actually that bad looking. What annoyed me, especially before practice codes, when you just like teleport yourself to the button and do it instantly, was... The very beginning, when you hit the button and like the timer starts, the movement to the first coin people would do was just so obnoxiously hard. Like you said, I, I hated it so much. I, I just mean like right after the, uh, right after the button press. Yeah, that's like, that's what See, I mean too. Yeah, you hit the button, it's like the hover slide, off and it's the like a really quick like hover dive rollout spin jump, but it's like super tight. And you have to have like no momentum in your spin jump. Yeah, I, I hated that strat so much. I just like, you know what? I'm not going to grind this if this is required. Because you, if you have the slightest amount of momentum, you just go right past the coin. And you're just like, well, that attempt is dead, I guess. And yeah. then you reset it or continue it as if. And uh, stuff like that. But one thing that we have to kind of note about Noki 6 Reds is they're, it's cycle-based. So mm-hmm. not, not specifically like the entire thing. It's not like Rico 4 Reds or anything like that where you're interacting with cycle-based blocks the entire time. There's mostly the end block is really the bottleneck, mm-hmm. essentially, where you want to get a water slide on it, or eventually we started trying to get a water slide on it in uh, See, IL attempts. You know how in Noki 6, regular secret, people talk about blue cycle or green cycle. In Noki 6 reds, it's more like you want to get to that block on a cycle where it's flat enough the whole time in its rotation, you can water slide across it. Yeah, but but enough of an angle at the end so that you have enough height so that you can get a wa- uh, a spin jump, a momentum spin jump out of it. So people so, were doing the water slide, I'm assuming, since like early 109, right? Because like, why, why wouldn't you I, do it? <laughs> I, I think so. I think you have to do it to get a 109, honestly. Yeah. Because it's really fast. Yeah, 109 is still really good. Like even nowadays, I think there's only a handful of people that have 109s. I had like a 108, so, probably. So yeah, Zalpiku Kirby and I traded back and forth. Mostly, it was, again, it was me making the strats. Like, I, I made the strats in, in my one thing. I, I did like a triple jump, Y turn, hover cancel, water, or uh, dive rollout that Zalpiku Kirby Im- immediately stole, the Trey's strat. Uh, he was doing a hover slide rollout at the start. Like, there was a bunch of really cool stuff that came out right away. And then we were just kind of grinding optimization. Uh, Zopika Kirby got the first 110, and I pretty much immediately got it back. And then I, I, I think at 110.25 remaining on the timer, it, st- it stayed stagnant for a while. Zopika Kirby was started working on the 120 tasks, and. Oh, geez, it was that long ago? Yeah. He, he's he's was, working was, on the 120 tasks as we speak. It's actually like a. Sort of a collaborative effort. They have like a whole Discord dedicated to it that I'm in that I don't ever contribute to, but it's there. And I'm pretty sure it was near the start of the 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 120 test. Do you know what? Or, was this yeah. like 2017, 2018? Yeah, late late 2017. Okay, and was 
I remember you had like a stream or two dedicated to grinding that level, right? Yeah, like there were six hour streams of me grinding Noki six reds. Th this is why I know that the IL tournament being a time requirement, <laughs> in, like I know that people would not want to watch that. Wait, you're saying- Because <laughs> it's just IL grinding. You're saying you didn't get as many viewers for Noki six red ILs as any percent? Yes. Say it ain't so. <laughs> or 96 shines. No way. <laughs> yeah. People have bad taste, what I say? So that's where the record stayed for, I guess, at, at uh, a year and a half. So mid this year, it stayed like that. And then uh, enter Galapagos. Galapagos, another Japanese player. The madman. Uh, he has the most insane pachinko, if you want to look it up on YouTube or just ask anybody in the community. It's an insane IL. Yeah, uh, Pachinko, if you think that Pachinko looks insane when people do it in runs with, you know, the fetch strats that look pretty risky, the IL strats in Pachinko are just out of this world crazy. And only Galapagos have, have, has done them, I'm pretty sure, or... They, they, like, they were made by him, at least. Like, it uses heavy abuse of the super weird physics that sort of, like, magnetize you to certain portions of the board. You just, like dive cancel on something like do a quick hover with the weird momentum they give you in pachinko like between each red coin it looks crazy <laughs> it, it is pretty nuts i can't so even put it in enter words. him just watch it for yourself enter him so the for the record so the record at noki six reds at this point is 110 25 and i had it for a while uh galapagos actually got one frame off the record and i went whoa uh this other guy sid is sweating and I was, I, was, I was like, oh, I, I've had this record for a while. I wonder what he does. Uh, oh, wait, this is the guy that has the Pachinko record? Oh, shit. Uh, so I should actually look at what he does. He, for some reason, I don't even know how he did it. He, he made a strat for, again, the top of the ramp. So Trey's, uh, where Trey's strat is, where you jump through the, red, the third red coin into the fourth red coin, but just before that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, at the top of the ramp, you would do, well, what I did... Then, so Zelpiku Kirby actually made this strat where you go to the top of the ramp, uh, hover to the top of the ramp, do a sp stored spin jump to the th to the uh, to the flat platform on top of the ramp where the third coin is, and then do the the double jump or the single jump through the third and fourth coin. And that's what Zelpiku's one of Zelpiku's contributions when he was grinding it, and that's one of the things that I stole. Galapagos, instead of doing just the hover up to the wall and waiting for it and storing the spin jump and going up, he had he went up to the wall as fast as possible, did a stored spin jump to a direction, and you and you had enough speed to get a double jump through the coin and do a Y turn. It's really hard. And wait, it, I can't even picture that. What what does he do? It, it's a stored angled spin jump through the coin. Oh. Or like in the direction of the coin, so you can Wait, get your so double you're, jump. So you're going go up the, the arrow ramp, doing yeah. doing what? Hovering. So you're, you're you hovering hover up, up the ramp, and then you get up to the wall where the flat platform. Oh, is. Oh, you're on the like the with... you're on the flat part next to like where it's raised up. Yes, I see. Okay, I can picture it now. Well, no, no, no. You're you're up against the wall of the ramp still. You're up against the wall. Like you're like, you're, you're on the you're ramp up against, up against, the, against wall the wall of the platform. Okay, I get it. And from there, like Zelpiku's strat was like that where you just hovered up you did a spin jump from the top there against the wall land on the platform just jump through the yeah that's the the, that's what line. you do like that's like the usual strat that, that's what i do in my rta runs Damn. uh because it's easy but galapagos went you know what i'm not going to change my pos mario's position uh i guess horizontally on the ramp like he's just going to go right up the ramp as fast as possible not that I really focus on changing Mario's location. He just ends up closer to the coin while he's hovering. Uh, he's, he goes up to the ramp wall. Make sure that you're far enough away from the coin. Do a, a stored spin jump in a direction towards the third coin. Get the double jump with momentum instead of landing on top of the, the platform where the, red coin, the third red coin is and walking in the direction. You're just all, already angled that, that way from the spin jump hover cancel into a double jump go through both coins oh i was i was thinking like how does he double jump out of a spin jump is like, oh you hover cancel and then do it okay yeah i so forgot about jump, that strat entirely cancel. wow it saves like 0. 0.3 <laughs> uh 
Damn. It doesn't save all that much time. Actually, no, it saves probably more now. Like, and yeah, it, the, technically it could be better. more because you could get a better cycle with it. So maybe. I don't know. So that's what his entrance strat was. He he changed that strat and made this incredible strat that is really hard. And th this is now back to the era of Bianco 8 where I go, yeah, I don't do strats that are IL specific. That's old Sid. So I don't really do things like that. This is the one exception to that rule where I went, I'm going to learn this strat so this fucker doesn't get this record. <laughs> But so at I that point, it was already too late. No, it wasn't. I, at that point, uh, oh, did you, did you improve the strat. with that? Yeah, I improved. Oh shit! Okay, uh, never mind. <laughs> I, I stole the strat. I don't know how with that strat he did not beat me, and he posted it. Like, how do you not? I don't understand the thought process of just. He could have dedicated a little bit more time and easily beaten my record before posting it. Maybe but he was he really a, proud of his time despite not being record. He posted a frame off record with this strat that watching it, I was like, how did this lose? Like, I don't know how it lost. Yeah, it looked way more technically impressive than yours, and it was still slower. <laughs> so I stole the strat and learned it, and it screwed up a few RTA runs afterwards because. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you lost like two 96 shine runs in a row to that because you were. The IL muscle memory was so ingrained in you that it just fucked you up. Because I, I, I did it for like seven hours straight or something one day. That is a serious issue. It's it's hard to be good at ILs when you also want to be good at RTA because you don't want to mess up your RTA muscle memory. Serious issue. So, so I ended up improving my record by 0 0.1. So I improved it by one. So it ended up being a 110.35. And I was just like, that can be way better, but maybe I'll come back to it to, at another day. Galapagos then went, well, fuck you. I'm going to get a 111. <laughs> and oh, so we got a 111 point, I don't know what it is right now, 0 0.07, 0 0.03, like something in the lower bit of 111, but you got a 111. And I looked at that and went, okay, well, this guy can have it. A 0.7 I, uh, improvement. A 0.7 improvement on my record. That is just nuts. <sighs> it, was, it was pretty nuts. I, I'm trying to remember there was a there was a thing I wanted to say. <clears throat> oh, and so when I got my 110.25 before Galapagos started doing it, I actually started having remember how I was talking about not specifically you, you know what I'm I'm talking about in general, but for the viewer, remember when I was talking about uh the cycles in Noki 6 Reds, at first I waited for a cycle. And so that I could get the specific block positioning so I could get the water slide across and stuff like that. Eventually, I just kind of... The timing worked out that I eventually got the block cycle no matter what I did. Like, if I did the proper movement or the fast movement at the start to hit the button, every time I had a solid run to the ending, I would have the, pl the block positioned perfectly. But with this new Galapagos strat, that wouldn't work. And my mentality before even the, the Galapagos strat, I was grinding... RTA viable Noki 6 Reds. And then that's kind of where the shift happened, where if it's RTA viable, I'll do it. But if it's IL specific, why, why even learn it? Mm -hmm. So I, that's when I started thinking waiting for a cycle was lame and all that kind of stuff started coming out from me. Ba from back in the day, I used to not care about that at all. It's like, if you wait for a cycle, that's cool, cool record. But RTA viable runs are awesome. But this Galapagos strat actually doesn't work RTA because the cycle doesn't work. So it's it's one of those strats where it's 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 kind it's in a way a setup. It's a it's I'd only, say it's like a a soft setup. Yeah, because you're just waiting for a cycle. There are other ILs like Serena Two Reds, which have like a serious setup where you actually go through the whole level, break particular blocks to like set it up much more ideally to get through quicker go back to the red button and then do it. But in this case, you're just waiting for a certain cycle before you hit the button. And obviously breaking, going forward and breaking the blocks and going back to the button and hitting the button would not be good RTA. Probably so, not, no. <laughs> what, what's funny about Galapagos' world record IL, though, is that he doesn't, like, stop moving and he doesn't stop moving towards the button. He just does, like, the slowest movement possible. So it's <laughs> like 
It's like if he was an English speaker, I would think that he's kind of making fun of my idea of what an IL or like a, a setupless IL was. Because I do my movement all the way to the button every time, but there's probably theoretically faster movement that I could do. Uh, I, I haven't really thought of it though. And so he just like does this shitty like jump dive ground pound. He he like looks like an utter scrub going to the button and then he hits the button and then he just fucking goes off. So Well, I'm sure it's, that's just sort of how it looked for that one attempt. I'm sure he's had hundreds of attempts and that just happened to yeah, be what it looked like I, for I, that one. But I just think it's fucking hilarious. That's yeah, kind of my just, point. It's a just, funny just contrast. Watching it. Like if he spoke English, I would I would think he was making fun of me. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, it's like I'm going to the, this isn't a setup. I'm 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 gonna get the cycle for free no matter what I do. It's uh, kind of slow, you know. I'm just not gonna do the water slide. All right, I hit the button and then he just fucking goes. But you know but, it's kind yeah, of a whack getting... thing. Well, I honestly it's a it's a good accessibility thing and quality of life change, but with practice codes, when you can just position you code yourself to the button instantly, you can theoretically get whatever cycle you want, even like ones you couldn't actually get legitimately in the game normally. What are your, yeah, what are your thoughts uh, on that? I, I remember some some Zelpiku ILs where he loaded the button, but you'd still have to wait anyway. Like, the, the cycle you had to wait for was longer than it would take to get there. But what if in no 6 I, Reds, there's a faster cycle you can get by just, like, hitting the button as soon as possible? From position obviously, codes. Obviously, we don't know. But, uh, like, the only thing that we're waiting for is the block at the end. Right. Like, you want, like, the blue cycle so you don't hit the, the other pieces of the block that comes out and shit. Well, but. it's a combination of that block and the pegs going in and out at the start, right? Yeah. You have to just but the sort of the sync pegs up. Coming, going in and out at the start kind of mean nothing. Well, they're somewhat important. They have to be, like, at least partially out. Yeah. But, I don't know. It's not much. <clears throat> but there you go. That does that cover it? Yep. He that's where it sits. Galapagos has a one eleven point I, I it's it's a point zero X. Like there's three options it can be. I can't remember what specifically the frame is, but I remember I remember waking up and being like, fuck, really? He got a one eleven. <laughs> when I saw <laughs> I that impressed. I couldn't believe it neither. And I was like, Well, I knew he'd like probably get a higher one ten, but goddamn, one eleven. So there's there's one person with a 111 PB in Noki 6 Reds. There's two people that have a 110. And there's like two other people that have a 109. I think that's it. I think so. Paper's one of them. And who else is a 109? SB, SB has recently got Oh, yeah. SB Electric. Yeah. From all of my extensive help. <laughs> he DM'd me asking for help. And I was just like, and he DM'd me his clip of him, of his PB, which was. I think like a low 108 or a high 107 or oh, something. Oh yeah, he sent you that clip like, and he's like, where do I lose time here? And you're just like, everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I didn't even say everywhere. I just kind of looked at it and went, you just kind of have, he, he was just like, do you have any tips? Do you have any specifics? And I was like, you just kind of, because he did all the same strats that I did. And I kind of didn't really understand why he was losing so much time. I'm just like, you just have to kind of go faster. It, it comes to a I point where well, doing the strats is not good enough. You just have to, really squeeze out every frame that you can yeah but but like the squeezing out every frame you can it's not squeezing out every frame you can and the reward the reward is those frames it's squeezing out every frame you can and then making the cycle at the end for the water slide mm -hmm. that's the important thing like if you don't squeeze out all those frames you don't get the the clean water slide into the moment of spin which saves upwards of probably 0.8 maybe even more I'd say the water slide saves at least a second over doing dive rollouts over it. Yeah. Pretty big. But yeah. So that's where it sits. I no longer have it. Noki 6 Reds is, is a Japanese-held IL record now. You got no plans on going back to it? I don't have any plans to grind any IL, but periodically I do. I need to watch that run again. I forgot how insane it was. <laughs> it's, it's an... It was 111. Speaks for itself. <laughs> He's he's the only he's the only guy that has ever gotten a one eleven, and the closest one is me with a one ten thirty five, and that's more than half a second away. Even Ryan Lockwood didn't get a one eleven. <clears throat> Good thing. <laughs> but yeah, I've been the summoning salt ripoff guy. This has been Sid and me. 
And this was another WR history segment. Woo! Sid, Sid and me. Sid and me and Sid. Sid and me I forget, and Sid. I forget what the meme was. It was something like that. Uh, summoning Salt Ripoff Guy. It's like, I was like, I'm Sid. the Summoning Salt Ripoff Guy, and I'm Sid. Or wait, how did I get <laughs> No, and you were still like, and Sid. And I'm like, and me. Yeah, I said, and Sid. And then, yeah, and me. Okay. And, and me. And it, it was something along those lines. A good meme. Okay, before we end yeah. this off, I actually had one more thing to cover on my laundry list. Cool. Uh, I did, we did get one question a few episodes ago um, from a Sinja W asking, what's your opinion on a tattoo of a shine spread? Uh, any, any thoughts on that? Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I personally I wouldn't get one. But then again, I don't See, I don't know of anything that I could get a tattoo of that I wouldn't regret five years later. I think, I think a tattoo of Shine Sprite doesn't seem too bad. It's not, like, it's I, not I'm too... Not, uh, recognizable. Not, not even that. It's not too, like, over the top. It, it can be a pretty small yeah. tattoo as well. Like, are we talking, like, a huge tattoo or, like, a small, tiny little wrist one? I don't know. I, I don't know. It it sounds actually okay if you're a big enough fan of sunshine. Uh, that sounds okay. If it's like your uh, favorite game, or one of your favorite games, then sure. But and and you're a tattoo guy. That's also important. Yeah, I think if it's like one tattoo alone by itself, it's different than like in a sea of other tattoos. Well, I mean, just in. In the case where you just don't want to have a tattoo. Like, I don't have any tattoos, and I don't plan on getting tattoos, but the idea right. of getting a tattoo, if I was comfortable with having tattoos, that doesn't sound like a horrible idea, considering how much time I've committed to the game and stuff like that. But And, and the fact that it's not super recognizable to everybody. Like, nobody's... I think one person has recognized that my Dutch J shirt my Dutch Day t-shirt with the Sandbird and the Shine Sprite in the same arrangement as a Hylian shield... Uh, I, I think only one person has recognized that as a sun, as a Super Mario Sunshine shirt. Has anyone recognized your Bouncy Boy shirt? No, I, don't, I, I haven't worn the Bouncy Boy shirt. In Bouncy years. Boy is world famous, though. <laughs> it's like, oh, is that a that's a Bouncy Boy shirt? Oh, Bouncy Boy, yeah, B Boy shrug. Oh, I, I love Bouncy Boy. But, but yeah, yeah. I, I, it's a bad, it's a fine idea. If you're into tattoos, I think it's a okay shine spread. I feel it. I think it's yeah. probably the best sunshine tattoo you could get like i'm trying to oh wait think no what else. about like yo the m graffiti m graffiti tattoo how about that eh. it, it, eh. it lends itself to a tattoo if you think about it see see what about the egad symbol Ooh, if you're a big fan of egad explaining stuff to you dude i love when he perfect for that calls me on my virtual boo if you love the virtual boo get that egad tattoo Dude, Dude, whenever I hear somebody talk about Luigi's Mansion in, like, a really positive vibe, light, I'm just like, who hurt you? <laughs> like, what? How do you It has its positive, game? it has its redeeming factors, but... It's fine. It's like, nothing, how, nothing spectacular. It's like, oh, it was a really pleasant surprise, and every, everything's great, and I love shiny things. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just sitting there going, like, what the... What is wrong you with you? Enjoying so things? How dare you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just. I hate you. I, I, I'm just a Luigi's Mansion hater, dude. Apparently, I don't really understand it. I just, just don't like that game. <laughs> it's See, fine. I'm probably not gonna any. I'm not gonna get any tattoos, most likely, because Same. there's nothing that I look back on five years or more ago that I thought was cool back then, except for speedrunning. Like other than that, nothing I thought was like super dope back then. I still think is cool now. Like, is it ever going to happen where stuff I think is cool now will eternally be cool to me or like mean something to me? I don't know. Probably it, gaming related. Like possibly. Like that's the but... only thing. That's the only thing I can think of where it's just like, oh, the only things that really are eternally uh, something that I care about are gaming related stuff. Like if I got a, a Super Mario sixty four tattoo, I wouldn't look at that and be like, because I really loved Super Mario sixty four when I was a kid. I wouldn't be like, oh, that's horrible. Like it's still a game that I really appreciated when I was a kid and as an adult, I can still appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But also when I see 
like no judgment on anybody that has gaming tattoos. It's just kind of weird to see somebody like with a sleeve that is gaming tattoo. Yeah, whenever you like, see like, that, you just immediately think, yeah, gamers rise up. Look at this guy. Badass. It's just it's just kind of like it, no, for some reason Mango transcends that. Which is weird. Yeah, Mango like, can I don't pull look off, at his tattoo. He can pull off whatever tattoo he wants. It's weird. Like he transcends that, but if I see saw like a random dude with a sleeve of, of gaming tattoos, I'd be like, all right. That guy might be a weirdo. No no Maybe. judgment. That's just like, you know, everyone first impressions are huge, right? Mm -hmm. And we're all humans and we, we tend to judge whether we like to admit it or not. But yeah, I see I see where, where would, you're going with it. Where would you get a shine tattoo? Where would you put it? That's what I was thinking as well. <laughs> like I, I across your you entire it. chest or <laughs> No. <laughs> we can we can rule that, that out. Would be what what if you put it like where a watch would be on your wrist? Yeah, I was thinking wrist as well. Um I'm trying to think of the best spot. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. See, I don't have any tattoos. I don't know where aesthetically it would look best. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a big lover of tattoos, just in general. If I were so. to get tattoos, it would probably just be some vague, abstract nonsense that means nothing, and that way it it ages really well. Oh, I can draw you a picture of of something. Oh, dude. Described exactly that way. If y'all haven't seen Sid's drawings, those drawings would be amazing tattoos for me. Just uh, for like how to describe my pictures is basically the way Trey just described the tattoo he would have. Super <laughs> like, weird, oh, vague, some... abstract nonsense that means nothing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's essentially what my drawing. Okay, is. I take it back though. I wouldn't want it of that one drawing looks like a penis. Ah, uh, yeah. I might get made fun of for that, just, but other than that, I'll uh, I'll I'll change that. Once you I add enough detail, the penis blends in with everything. It's fine. Yeah, the penis will blend. The penis goes away. Yeah, the penis goes away. <clears throat> you put a sock over the penis that says happy style, and there you go. Yeah, happy style Good penis. Good to go. Happy style penis. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think we have any more thoughts of the decade, do we? I thought, it, I thought it was a fun decade. It's been a heck of a decade. I've come a long way. In, in a single decade, I've went from nobody to a nobody who can play Mario fast. <laughs> Same. And that's what really counts. Uh, yeah, my taste in music hasn't really changed. I don't know. Nothing's really changed. I feel like my taste know. in music has gotten more refined, but it's stayed more or less the same, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was, a fun, it was a fun time. We played some games. I made some friends. Had some laughs. Had some laughs. But yeah, I'm glad hopefully it um, you, the listener, if you were hearing this far... You had a good decade as well, and we look forward to the upcoming decade as well. Yeah, t t in the comments below on the YouTube video, uh, say what your favorite game of the decade was, or your favorite. Or the non-existent Spotify comments. Or the non-existent Spotify comments. For now, I'm sure next decade they'll add that, though, right? Yeah, definitely. Spotify comments. I'm calling it. If they're smart. Yeah, hire me, Spotify. Come on, I got the ideas. Like, we should add a comment section. Oh, this is a horrible Everything idea. Everything <laughs> needs a comment section in the next decade, dude. Yeah. But yeah, we're on Spotify and Google Play. If you want to listen to us on the go and not have a YouTube video up the whole time. The, the one thing I want to leave off on is that if you have a sleeve of gaming tattoos, you're fine. We won't judge you out loud. You're beautiful. You're still beautiful to me. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 let's, end it. let's end the podcast, right? Have a good decade. Or have a good bitch. Have okay. a good decade. I don't know. <laughs> have a good have a good one. That's the beginning of the decade. Have a good one. Have a good decade. Have See a you good next decade. week.